And we are live once again. Welcome everyone to the Solvable Mysteries podcast. This is Euros, and as every week, I'm joined by my co-host Glenn Hykov. How are you feeling, man? Hello, doing great. Uh, just had an awesome day at the beach of uh, body surfing and boogie boarding. So uh, I feel real good, but my my eyes are totally bloodshot from <laughs> staring staring at the sun and the water all day. I mean that's Salt water too. that's not a smart yeah. idea, man, to stare at the sun all day. Yeah, it's just I don't know. I, I I hope it's just from the salt water and not from like you know bright sun all day because I don't you know I can't wear my sunglasses in the water. Really, I guess I could try that, but or maybe it's coronavirus, man. <laughs> I hope not. I know we're still worried about that here for sure. Definitely. Um. um yep. Yeah. Let's. I think let's jump into it, man. So, um. Do you have uh, a very interesting case once again? And uh, a quick disclaimer, uh, I think our theories on this case will not be as uh, sensational, I think, as uh, a lot of people uh, that, you know, really look into this case. Maybe we will miss some point, points in here, but I think we will definitely end up with a rational explanation to what happened to a certain person. However, uh, we will have some really details, like some really crazy details that we will address that will sort of, I think, steer us out of the dislikes on YouTube, hopefully. So um, without any further ado, uh, today we're talking about Magdalena Juk, uh, a woman who died under mysterious, I will definitely say mysterious circumstances. Her death was... Uh, definitely not straightforward uh she's she was polish and she died in egypt so i don't know man i think before we get into the nitty-gritty uh side end of things in this case i think we should start off with talking a little bit about magdalena wouldn't you agree yeah totally this is have you had you heard of this case before this was kind of a new one for me for sure it, it was not on my radar actually i haven't heard about it and you know the interesting fact is that uh, this was a Polish woman, and I'm a Lithuanian guy, and uh, for anyone who is aware of Eastern European geography, we are pretty much neighboring countries, uh, so I have not heard about this case, and that's pretty weird that I haven't, because this is probably the most uh, famous Polish uh, mystery in recent times at least i don't think i'm sure there are some more but like this is definitely a top five in poland and i haven't heard about it so it was really interesting for me to look into the whole case for say now magdalena juk the woman that you can see on our youtube channel right now uh, if you just go to YouTube and type in Solvable Mysteries Podcast, um, we have all of our visual assets there. She was a 27-year-old woman uh, from Poland, and she was, from what I've gathered, a very successful 27-year-old person, because she allegedly was already a business owner. Now, she was in the beauty market she was a beautician at least that's what she's being referred to around the internet and she was you know you can tell that she was uh, someone that really took care of herself she was uh, by all means a, a very a attractive woman to say the least so um i don't know man uh, your thoughts on how a 27 year old is already a successful business owner i mean that's i mean i didn't find any information on that so i i was i, I don't want to talk ab too much about it because i'm not really certain how credible that information is yeah i mean one of my other sources was saying that she'd actually created that beauty so opened that beauty salon at the age of 22 so that's even earlier um but then yeah but by the time uh she has her her major life issue that we're talking about today she is 27 so yeah it's a lot of um I don't know how how common is that over the like like in, in your neck of the woods to even be able to start a business at such a young age i mean in america that's sort of like what they push on all of us is if you don't go work for a big company then like that's supposed to be the american dream is that it's easier in theory to start your own business and to you know incorporate yourself and all these things but i, I mean from your You're right I, I, i'm gonna yeah what's what's sort of the 
you're right you're completely right because here in in the european union because both of these countries lithuania and poland is in the eu the taxes will kill you man like they they right now in america the people are saying uh that the american government is ra raising taxes to like crazy amounts but like we had higher taxes since forever so like there's a whole bunch of like to keep it to keep it real right now with everyone if you're gonna succeed in in eastern europe at least where i'm from in lithuania or at poland as well you know, when you're like starting out a business you're gonna do a whole bunch of tax evasion and that's just a just that's just a simple fact like if if you want it's like a business uh like like a valuable uh, knowledge to have is how to hide your taxes from the government and that's like already uh makes me question this whole theory because would she know how to hide the taxes i mean i don't know how to hide my taxes so i don't know man maybe she did or maybe she was straightforward with the taxes <laughs> that's just me man <laughs> I'm laughing a little bit because uh, <laughs> one of the reasons why people incorporate here and make their own businesses is sometimes you can take certain expenses and things in your life and put them against a business and like basically pay yourself from your own business and use you, like kind of it's sort of like like the American version of what you're talking about where it's you're kind of getting around you, you get like tax, tax deductions and stuff from that. I get, so, I get, I get yeah. what you're saying. We have the same thing. It's like when you buy a, you know, a car that you use for, you know, uh, a company car, but it's really your own car and things like that. So, right. um, moving along with the story, she has a boy boyfriend called Marcus. I think I have his picture somewhere around here. Uh, let me just find the picture really quickly. Now, um, she, this is pretty much Marcus, her boyfriend they are dating for four months and she decides to buy him a ticket to egypt you know for a vacation i mean she works hard she definitely deserves a vacation i'm not really certain what marcus was doing i think he was a hairstylist at least that's one source of information i have don't quote me on this i think he did the hair so probably in the same niche as um magdalena which would make sense why they sort of hit it off and things like that however Marcus had an expired passport and this is a common theme here in Europe. I also currently could not leave, uh, uh, pretty much I couldn't leave uh, the European Union because I only have like that ID card which allows me like free passage uh, throughout like the European Union countries. But I couldn't really leave anywhere outside of Europe so if I wanted to go to Egypt I also had to get a passport. I have been to Egypt before uh, when I was a kid and um, you know they had to like I had to go to the poli police station and I had to order like a passport so it's a real thing and it takes time and it definitely makes sense to me and it you know because I know this situation all too well so he didn't have the passport but Magdalena still bought the tickets so as a surprise potentially but um i don't know do you think that's a weird move on her end yeah i mean i would really say this was maybe the beginning and maybe this is foreshadowing a lot of the weirdness that comes next is this seems like a very spur of the moment almost like manic thing to do with with like very poor planning in some ways depending on kind of what you know what detail you believe next that we hear about this whole thing right so uh first of all uh as i've said in the beginning of this podcast we will probably not have a super sensational uh realization to what actually happened to magdalena juk however there will be some weird details and apparently one source states that magdalena actually asked marcus's friend about his passport situation and this friend of marcus actually informed magdalena that marcus had a uh, invalid passport at that time but she then still bought the tickets so that was one 
weird area uh, and the second one would be that Marcus four hours before the flight was due to Egypt was trying to sell those tickets on Facebook uh, he was offering them at half price the full price was 90 euros so around a hundred and a thousand and two hundred dollars for the US audience just to uh, make it more uh, clear to them so he was auctioning them off for five four hundred and fifty euros so around six hundred bucks on Facebook and allegedly some people stated that they accepted this deal but then Marcus was like not responding to them or telling them that the tickets have been already sold or just outright denying them so um, the first theory that Magdalena asked Marcus's friend about his passport situation would sort of correlate with your end of thinking that Magdalena was already uh, on a verge of a psychotic uh, moment. However, the second theory that Marcus actually denies uh, selling those tickets would correlate with the people thinking that Marcus was somehow involved in what you know, happened to Magdalena. So your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, do you think that, because one of the things I saw kind of is like the counterpoint to even that, if that was true, like, oh, he tried to sell it, but then, like, which apparently is true. And then there's some like, kind of anonymous people saying, oh, I tried to buy it from him. But then other people pointed out, well, like, whether or not he could sell them, getting the names changed in the tickets is a whole other deal and it's really expensive and, and maybe he just like <laughs> maybe he didn't really know what he was talking about like he's like oh yeah let's sell it and sell it you know you know 50 cents on the dollar or you know 50 pence on the pound or whatever on the euro <laughs> i don't know i don't know what, what, what what's a fraction of a euro um but anyway tries to sell at half price but it's like well dude yeah you can go like make some kind of agreement but the airline's still gonna charge more than that maybe he realized like he was just getting himself even deeper like he wasn't like they weren't going to save any money exactly you know what i mean exactly. at some point yeah they were just going to pay more yeah so i mean uh the the official story here is that no one actually buys the tickets which i would think yeah. is the correct theory at least in my eyes because um i think it's a common knowledge that you can't get a plane ticket uh from someone else who has registered that plane ticket with his name and to take that ticket with someone else's name and then go to the airport uh, changing the name is a possibility but then it costs a whole lot of money you know what i'm saying so because it's just added risk for the plane companies they have to like do all of these double checks last minute which is you know it's the same situation where if you go into the airport you don't own a smartphone and you forgot your physical ticket uh, the printing, the printers will cost you like 50 euros. So it's just it's just airport stuff, at least here in Europe. So um, they find ways to make that money. Uh, let's jump into when Magdalena arrives into Egypt because she does decide to go alone, which is some people state it's really weird how Magdalena decided to go alone on this trip. Uh, but I don't think it's super weird because they have only been dating for four months which is not that long and I would, I would i would go in her you know place i, I would definitely go I, I don't know what would it, you do yeah i mean to me so i guess i come from a different point of view it seems so strange to me well unless of course that she really bought it for herself so if it was really like you know the <laughs> i think there's, there's a simpsons episode where homer buys marge a bowling ball which he thinks she won't use so then it'll end up being his so did she do this just to give, I mean, not that she needed an excuse, but did she really want to go to Egypt? And she's like, Oh, it's going to be your birthday gift four month, you know, four month long boyfriend, uh, you know, four, four month relationship boyfriend. We're going to go to, go to abroad, um, you know, like pretty far away, Egypt. And then, Oh, you can't go. I'm sorry. Well, I'll go anyway. Um... I don't know. To me, to me, it's pretty weird. Like to me, it's, it's, I mean, if that wasn't the reason that she wasn't just hurt for her, really then it's kind of odd to like hey we were going to spend your birthday together like you know like i figure that's a big deal if you're just starting to date somebody to spend their birthday with them oh i i can't go because you don't your pat like this whole you know what i mean it's just like a strange series of stuff once again it either makes her look really dumb or kind of manic 
to, mm. to like have planned this whole trip without but, having you know what i mean in her defense uh, she was said to be very spontaneous and i actually know of <laughs> people like her i actually do know of people like her yeah. that will do things like this you know that w it's a certain certain group of people who really are like that who will yeah. you know be super spontaneous like they do one thing one moment and the other moment they're like let's do a the whole nother thing you know what i'm saying did you, did you read the part where because you know even with her business and everything supposedly she had to borrow money from her parents to pay for this trip yeah did but yeah, yeah. I've, I've read about it however it's i'm not it's gonna not it's not proven yeah. it's definitely not proven and it would be weird but i don't want to talk about it too much because it's not proven and i feel like it's super easy to prove you know go ask the parents but this information is missing from the internet so I don't know, man. So, um, okay, let's jump into when she arrives at the hotel. Now, um, before she arrives, she is being dropped off at the airport by her boyfriend, Marcus, and CCTV footage captured uh, Magdalena arriving with two other people to the airport. She was acting pretty normally. She was tearful and sad a little bit, but maybe that's because she can't uh, fly alone. You know what I'm saying? Uh, she has to fly alone i mean uh, maybe that was one of the reasons why she was quite sad but she acts still normal in the airport the real craziness begins when she arrives at egypt this is when things really get crazy now she arrives on the 26th of april and she immediately calls marcus and marcus reports that on this particular call the first call that they have when she is in egypt she already sounds nervous and anxious this is his direct quote so um don't you think that's uh do, do, do you potentially think that something may have changed once she arrived in egypt like almost like immediately yeah i mean from my point of view it sound it sounds like she was already going through some kind of psychological crisis or a deepening of it which I, how long does it take to would you guess to fly from Poland to let's say Cairo three hours because uh, her gather because I made the same exact flight three hours oh is that it yeah oh, that's nothing okay wow that you guys are a lot closer to Egypt than I thought you were I, th I thought it would be like I don't know I, I nah, at three least hours, like man. like yeah yeah that's, just... not, that's not too bad okay yeah that's like that's like from here to Colorado for where, where I'm where I'm at in Los yeah. Angeles okay that's not horrible yeah, so, and she's, you know, within those three hours, things change, apparently, for her. Now, she does arrive at the hotel later on in the day, and I have some pictures of the hotel. So, the hotel is called, like, the Three uh, Squares Resort, something like that. Let me just quickly uh, check the name to be exact. It's called the Three Corners Equinox Resort Beach Hotel. So, that's the official name so um it looks like you're the most basic and the most typical egyptian hotel ever because i believe i stayed in a similar thing it's just there's just a whole bunch of these uh establishments in egypt and it was stationed by the red sea it's it's a four-star hotel uh and i will tell you this much like uh, when i was in egypt i really enjoyed my time there uh, everything is paid for, you know, uh, Magdalena was using that to her advantage. She was in the bar having a few drinks, but then later on in the day, she's acting quite crazy in this hotel. She, at one point, she's allegedly taking off her top and being topless with like really warm trouser pants uh, when it was super hot outside. So your thoughts on that? Yep. Yeah, that part I was actually really shocked by that because, you know, like it's an area of the world that's extremely socially and religiously conservative, and not on these hotels, know. man. Not on these hotels, man. That, that, that must be what it is. I mean, I guess that's that's probably also why you can drink, you know, because alcohol is forbidden in a lot of the the Middle East because of Islam. Um, but I know, like, the hotels are often some kind of weird thing. But just just the taking your top thing off. I don't know. I mean, I, I, the U.S. doesn't really have that. You know, it doesn't have like a kind of like a like a like, like an insulated zone where where tourists can do stuff like that. Like even 
<laughs> a long time ago. Yeah. 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 Well, one time I was at the beach and, um, uh, actually, uh, there were some girls from Europe and, and a, a woman, a young woman, probably college age took off her top. And <laughs> one of my, one of my, my in-laws was a little bit scandalized by it. He's from South, uh, Central America where they don't do that. But, um, it was funny because I think that like no one really wanted to say anything. And even the young lifeguards, like they didn't want to be the bad guy. So like the old lifeguard, like the old guy had to come over and like tell her to put her top off because she thought that was just normal. Right. So I don't know, maybe I guess you know better than me what goes on and what, what's sort of acceptable there. But from my perspective, I guess I naively thought that would be like when the Egyptians would call the cops right away and say, Hey, you can't do that here. You know, like, like you, I don't know what you do back in Poland, but you can't uh, like be showing your, your, your memory glands. Well, to, um, yeah, all of us. I mean, the thing is, I don't think it's acceptable, but because there's a whole bunch of kids in here, and it's pretty much a like how these hotels are structured. They're pretty much placed in the middle of a desert, and because the real estate is so cheap to build these hotels there, they're not built around a city most of the time. They build, they're built like let's say a few kilometers away from the city in the desert coastal area uh, just because the you know land is, there is super cheap you can't build a hotel uh, in the center of a city uh, because or like next to the beach but in the on on the city next to the beach if you know what i mean because that land would cost a lot so how these are structured they're pretty much isolated from civilization at least uh for like a few kilometers radius and that would mean that a lot of these families mostly like from eastern europe and western europe and mostly europeans that go to egypt uh, are stationed in these uh, particular hotels with like little children you know and they got nowhere else to go usually they don't have cars their uh, tour agencies like the, the agencies that they booked their uh, pretty much vacation on uh, drives them to the hotel from the airport and then drives them back from the hotel to the airport so that's pretty much the deal so we have a whole bunch of kids running around in the hotel and you have magdalena like acting a little bit crazy not having yeah, a top yeah. on that's that's the, that's not acceptable right okay so there is like i i guess like i said it's a little bit of a cultural thing and maybe for like the any of the americans listening I know for me, you know, I'm living in a pretty liberal part of the United States and even I'm like, okay, nobody takes their tops off here at the beach or at hotels. And I, I didn't know like what the cultural significance is, if that's like something you wouldn't do around children, you know what I mean? Like, like, oh, it's okay around other adults, you know, in certain situations, but, but if there's like a little kid there, then it's still no, no versus like, I don't know, as an American, I could look at that and be like, oh, well maybe we're just, that's, that's, Europeans would look at that and say you're being conservative. It's just a body, because <laughs> not the Polish. My kids, not the Polish, because the Polish are the most conservative yeah. people right. in, in the whole of Europe. So not the Polish. Catholics, right? Yeah, because I mean, yeah, that's that's my dad's side of the family, and for sure, the conservative Catholics going back some generations. Okay, so then the, the the other quick question I had for you is: you mentioned in these packages, everything's kind of paid for. Does that does that include the liquor? Yeah, exactly. You can drink all okay. you want. Wow. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll stick a pin in that because I will, when you get to some of the other facts, I will chime in with something about that part of it. But okay, yes, let's exactly. keep going. Right. Let's, let's keep going. So on the 26th, she's acting crazy. She already is um, pretty much annoying most of the other tourists that are there, annoying the staff. So one, one second she said to be accusing people of like stealing her stuff. She goes to her hotel room she calls marcus tells him that someone's in her room she hears voices in her room she brings the phone to the receptionist while marcus is on this phone and asks marcus apparently because she didn't speak english uh, and marcus apparently did uh, to t tell the receptionist uh, to go and check out her room because she's really afraid that something's in her room so that's that's just straight up manic stuff right there we will uh, talk about this end of the situation later on so let's not stop here she then pretty much does something that we do not know of now this is a crazy part that we do not really know 
what happened from the 26th to the 27th per se but I'm, I assume she was acting crazy but not to the extent that she would ne need to be uh, like the cops need to be called on her I think she the staff of the hotel definitely know okay this woman is acting crazy but then maybe they thought she was really drunk because she was drinking so that was probably why no one really called the cops and were because these hotels they deal with like drunk people from eastern europe all the time if i was in in one of these establishments <laughs> like I, i'd make myself known that i'm there you know what i'm saying so yeah. uh people like us like we like we like they have they know us you know they they know me they right. know like people from where where i'm from they know that this is gonna happen regardless so um i think they were thinking let her like sleep it off and you know in the morning she's gonna be good so um that's that was that's pretty much what everyone thought but then on the 27th, oh no, oh no, on the 27th, she goes even crazier. Like I have on my notes that she was being topless a lot more during the 27th. She was texting her parents, her friends in such a manner that she was, that they were with her in this hotel, if you know what I mean. I mean, did you uh, know about the deal? Yeah. Did she, yeah. You want to Yeah, that she, was, she was talking to her. She was like, like, like texting her friends even too. And she was like, Hey, when are you coming down from your room? And they're like, what are you talking about? We're not there with you. You know that and she just, just, just was doing, was, yeah, seemed to be, be almost like delirious. Um, and, and like confused about what the, her actual situation was. Calls her boyfriend. Boyfriend is like, you're going way too crazy right now. I don't know what's happening to you. Books a flight for her to return home on the 29th. So this is an important moment. She's going crazy on the 27th, uh, on the second day. The, the earliest flight that Marcus can book her flight home to is on the 29th. So let's keep that in mind. She has like two days to survive in Egypt at this point. Um, at, at the 27th, uh, a man, a very important man in this case, Mahmoud Khairi, uh, appears in the picture. This guy right here is, he has the most weirdest job in the world, wouldn't you agree? I mean, he is like a, a tour guide slash agent, tour agency worker slash like just a general handyman that pretty much makes sure that uh, everyone is good, you know? I think that's his like sort of position just whenever the tour agency needs some help someone's doing some crazy stuff someone's too drunk uh some drunk europeans trying to fight each other or something like that he like is the guy that the agency calls to like straighten uh, things out I i'm thinking that's his official role right <laughs> he's like the fixer he's the uh he's the mechanic he's the um you ever seen Pulp Fiction? He's like the wolf. Yeah, exactly. You bring him in for, for problems, yeah. Right, so this man is steps in. He's pretty much trying to take care of uh, Magdalena. Now, um, this is where I think we have to mention that most people that really look into this case and feel some type of way about this case strongly believe that he is involved in her death. So, um... Let's 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 go on. Let's find out if he actually is involved. Uh, I'm not sure if he will be able to do that, but let's uh, go through the details. So, he on the 29th, uh, she is pretty much acting crazy. This guy on the I mean on the 27th, she's acting crazy. This guy steps in, tries to help her out. Uh, she's not being transported out of the hotel yet. This is the detail that I've looked into a little bit, but couldn't find credibility on the night, on the 27th. Uh, researchers actually found that her phone was uh, in the, like, 20 kilometers into the Red Sea, apparently. So, uh, these are, like, the screenshots from where, I mean, that phone call was, uh, like, her phone was traced. And some people state that she was actually put into a small boat and transported 
20 kilometers into the Red Sea and then she was returned back to the hotel so um, your thoughts on the credibility of this because the Polish authorities as well as the Egyptian authorities disregard this fact completely yeah I mean I'm gonna be the bad guy here and say like it's interesting you see all this kind of conspiracy conspiracy theory stuff around like some some scenario there's zero evidence for that she's whisked away in some small boat i don't even know it was a small boat why not a big boat why not an aircraft carrier i mean you know what i mean like like for all all the all the guessing around of it around it it just you know i think it, it, and mm -hmm. like and like what is this based on you know this is based on who said that you know what i mean like like the, i saw it you know we both saw it in some of our research but like in terms of like all this postulation of, of theories by by people about it it's like these random I, i'm gonna i'm gonna make this criticism a couple times i think you'll have some investigator say something like they're an expert and it's like well why are you an expert on that why what, what's your evidence like you're what you used to work for the cia and do do satellite analysis or something or signals intelligence so that's yeah it, it's just weird like we, we know what we know what other people were saying that were there um, but then this, this one little thing pops up and I don't know, like, like I, so I, I do Google, like I let Google track my location on my phone. I've done that for years and sometimes it'll lose a signal and it'll suddenly show me like in the middle of a mountain or something. And I, I can tell you for sure I wasn't in the middle of that mountain. Like the, the phone did something wacky. Exactly. Um, so yeah, that's my thought. Exactly, and also we will show a footage of one of like the the, the famous uh, phone video phone call that Magdalena had with Marcus, and like the connection was really choppy. You know what I'm saying? So um, the credibility that uh, this is like the exact pinpoint, and this is where it definitely happened. I mean, I'm questioning this, but I mean it's there. They it, it showed it to be there, so it's there and i think that's let's just leave it at that i mean i'm not just regarding it completely as like nothing um, i think it, it was definitely there at one point the signal but you know what actually happened is a, is a guessing game at this point so the next morning now this is some crazy stuff right there this is pretty much her on the next morning so i don't know man uh she looks in the worst state that she has ever been so this is her in the morning on the 28th 28th so the next day she's scheduled to fly home at Bakhmut and, and the staff members are probably I don't know if they are involved in what's happened here but you know everyone's thinking that is she gonna make it on that flight because she's really acting crazy so um what do you think do you think that's that's because something happened to her during that night. Maybe she was transported on a boat and this is the reaction that she had. Like this right here is the reaction in the morning. No, you know, I, I mean, uh, I just think well, one thing I, I, when we were talking about how she was acting so far, nobody's seen her eat anything for like three days. She's been doing a lot of drink, <laughs> drinking on an empty stomach, maybe and running around erratic and boy i bet you if i ran around all manic for three days like i was on meth or something and and drank a bunch of drinks and didn't eat anything and weighed you know 110 pounds or how much she weighs um i'd probably look like that too exactly i mean <laughs> i mean i don't know she's acting crazy but she has been acting crazy before you know this alleged uh midnight boat ride happened so she was acting crazy before she acted she, she started acting crazy before she even met mahmoud so you know that's just the only dig i got on this theory let's move on into the story uh pretty much right after this footage was taken she was actually uh pretty much on not right after the footage but she, she was apparently in a state of like complete uh like i don't know vegetation at some point because she was not reacting to anyone you know uh some staff members tried to help her out she was not reacting and on 3 p.m she is taken to the hospital we have the footage from when she's uh, taken to the hospital 
pretty much this is a hospital. Uh, it's a, it's a pretty, I guess, normal hospital to say the least. I mean, the people are dressed not necessarily in the most professional manner, like not in a way that you would see, you know, in like Europe or like the US for say, but you know, it's a hospital and she arrives here uh, because she was acting crazy and all of a sudden, you know, you, you can see that she's walking quite normally. She's also dressed quite, uh, quite like uh, presentable. So I find it to be a real strange shift how she's on the floor not reacting to anyone and now she's walking by herself you know your thoughts yeah i mean it just i can't help but think she's if there's something going on with her like maybe emergent schizophrenia um triggered by kind of this this change of location and you know she's had this weird rapid cycling of like impulsive stuff even before the trip started to buy the trip goes on the trip but goes without her boyfriend then she's there she's doing she's taking off her top she's chugging drinks she's not eating maybe um i just think like she's she's just alternating between being gassed out you know like i i can't go i can't go more than 24 hours without just collapsing and and, and doing stuff but somebody you know like even meth addicts meth addicts will binge for days on, on you know they do, do meth for days and then they eventually crash out because your body just can't take it so i can't help but wonder what the heck's going on with her to me she just seems like she's being like some kind of strange form of maybe schizophrenia or something which which interestingly is often the diagnosis when someone travels somewhere and starts doing really weird things, which we'll, we'll get into, I think, closer to the end of the show. But yeah, it, it, to me, I, I still don't see anything that could be explained so far by <laughs> by anything that we have any evidence for. Okay. Let me put it that way. So yes, yeah, she's doing weird stuff, and 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 like, and I know it's about to get even a lot weirder and a lot more disturbing. Uh, but she, yeah, so far damn right. she just looks like someone having a meltdown. Damn, yeah. damn right it will, man. So let's let's pause it right here. This is the twenty eighth. So as you remember, I already said that on the 29th, ninth, uh, her boyfriend. So for the next day, had already booked a flight back home. So what the actual staff in this hospital do they actually refuse treatment because their rationale is that they don't have any psych psychiatrics on the uh, vicinity uh, because it's not meant for mental health situations which i don't know it makes sense to me because here in lithuania we have like hospitals at least in my city there's a hospital that there are like two big hospitals and one does one line of things and the other one does the other line of things. So for people that think that a hospital should, you know, all of a sudden be responsible for every single like, um, you know, uh, disorder, that's probably not the correct way of looking at it because, you know, I live in a city where we have like a hospital for like the eyes, skin, uh, mental stuff, and then we have a hospital for like uh surgeries uh like i don't know uh things like that uh, rehabilitation so uh hospitals at least where i'm from are definitely worried in what they can offer the populace nevertheless she's uh, acting fairly normal as you can see from this footage so um the doctors in this hospital uh pretty much state that she's okay she's gonna fly back home tomorrow uh and that you know let's just leave just just take her back to the hotel just take her back to the hotel and let her board that flight tomorrow and she's gonna be good so mahmoud and some other mysterious people because mahmoud was seen with a whole bunch of people you know it was not just mahmoud that was taking care of her so that's you know that's a little bit weird uh that mahmoud had all of these people with him but maybe they were his friends i mean i don't know this information so i don't want to speculate too much that maybe they were like associates and this was a big like cover-up of what they did the previous night but let's just keep moving um so she arrives back to the hotel and now this is the crazy details right here so i believe i believe on 6 
a.m. in the next morning on the 29th on the day when she was scheduled to fly back home so I still believe that she was understanding what people were telling to her because why I say that because on a later phone call that we will discuss that she had with Marcus she was for 90% of the time she was not responding to Marcus's statements but on 10% of the times she was actually responding to Marcus's statements so she still was understanding uh, to some degree of people of what people were telling her and I do believe she was aware that she was going to fly home on the 29th I think she was aware about that in the back of her head but for some reason at 6 a.m. in the morning she tried to allegedly jump off of a roof of this hotel so um, I'm looking at the pictures of this hotel the roof is such that uh, you would there's a high percentage of dying I would say like there's a really high percentage of dying I mean it depends on from what which roof you jump off but like all of these roofs seem like they're pretty high so um, I don't know you want to add something in, in in the air man no I mean I think we lost you, man, for a few seconds. Oops, oops, sorry, I'm sorry. Hit the, the mute button twice. Yeah, no, it, it looks pretty daunting. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, that looks exactly fatal to jump off of there. But theories are that she was actually running away from someone. Now, uh, would she be running away from someone to the roof? Uh, why wouldn't she not run? I mean, I don't know what the situation was. Maybe the roof was the only avenue for her to run if she was running away. But, uh, you know, that's pretty much the worst case scenario. Because, like, if she had any sort of other avenues to run away from whoever she was running away from, I think she could have made the, a different route, like, to the receptionist or something like that. You know what I mean? So, I'm not really sure how credible is the theory that she was actually running away from. Potentially Mahmoud and his goons you know what i mean so let's keep moving uh on i believe let me just check the time uh, on 2 p.m on the same day on the 29th she checks out of a hotel and mahmoud takes her to the airport uh conflicting details are of what happened at this airport some people state that uh she was acting normal and that mahmoud and his goons sort of walked her around in the airport and didn't let her board the plane some people state that uh, some witnesses state that she was acting really crazy taking off her clothes in the airport uh, some statements are that there was a doctor on the airport which i believe is the most uh, reasonable thing to believe checked her out and pretty much said that she was not mentally stable enough to fly back home so she was denied access uh, on the plane which i think is weird how the hell does a mentally uh, like unstable person get back to poland at that point you know what i'm saying like how how the hell would you do that maybe there's like some embassy stuff that you have to do right yeah i mean yeah that's i think i was just gonna ask about that so two things so one is if you just take the airline's point of view they're not equipped to handle like a combative person. As a matter of fact, like I, I'm sure their rules right away say if you at all, if they at all think that you're not going to sit in your seat and listen on that flight, they're going to kick you right off that flight because the fact is if they have any kind of air emergency where someone starts freaking out, even that, like what if someone had a heart attack in the middle of the air, they got to land. So then they, they screw up that whole flight. It's, it's incredibly expensive. They lose probably tens of thousands of dollars if not more from that flight because now they got to land someplace they weren't supposed to land they got to pay like extra fees for that everybody's going to be mad because they didn't get to go straight back home then they got to arrange new you know it's it's like not an easy thing even like like just landing the airplane the airplane's got to be checked out again like there's a whole problem there like and, and that's, not, that's not even counting like what if she goes she wigs out on the plane so she's wigging out attacking people you've seen the, the videos where like passengers have had to like jump on the help the the crew subdue somebody so she's like an actual flight hazard 
I, to your point, I think this is where I've been kind of beating up on Magdalena a lot in this episode, but I will kind of beat up on the, the, the embassy now because apparently the embassy had been informed of her problems and it doesn't seem like they were super helpful. Like, I don't know if they just didn't take it seriously to your point, maybe, maybe, you know, enough drunken tourists go to these resorts and get into trouble. And, and, you know, like, like everybody just tries to, to hope it'll go away when the trip's over that, you know, a few days you get back in your plane and now you're Poland's problem again and no harm, no foul. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you don't, you don't get to come back, but yeah, I, I mean, it is, it does make you wonder, like if someone's having an actual, an actual issue, it, it does make you wonder if they'd never run into this issue before where someone had been this out of it, that they weren't able to have it successfully addressed with a, you know, physician or something like that initially. And, and then like, like, like she's really like a persistent problem. Like no joke day after day after day, this person's waking out. And at some point, I don't know. I don't know. Like what, what were they, were they super busy at the Polish embassy that day that they couldn't deal with like, <laughs> like do, do their, do their friggin' job, you know, no, like, like no. I mean, at some point it's not, it's not, it's not like poor, poor Mahmoud's problem. It's not really Mahmoud's job to like manage, you know, somebody having like, like, like an emotional and psychological crisis. Like I he's mean, there to like, yeah, you but, know what I mean? He's, he's, he's Mahmoud, there, he's there for you to, for you to go see the pyramids. Right. That's but, it. Exactly. That's, that's a good way of putting it. But he was, he did make some statements like some, some statements that, you know, are pretty like offensive towards like Marcus at some point. So let's not necessarily say that, you know, he was the nicest dude in the world because he no, was yeah, well, de definitely not. So, so, so wait, wait, but was that, so that was based on that, that one, that one, um, I mean, we could get video, into it, right? That one we video, could get into yeah. it, like what happened next. So, um, we, if we would step in right here, uh, the Polish embassy, there's a bit of a mis uh, misunderstanding here. The Polish embassy allegedly offered, uh, Magdalena's parents, like, flash passports i would call them to pretty much get on a flight and come to egypt because uh, none of the ma none of magdalena's family members have passports at this point uh, so they can't fly back home uh, magdalena's family denies these claims they state that the polish uh, embassy did not offer them anything now i'm conflicted and i can't pick a side to which i would like would be leaning towards because i definitely know that these embassy workers do nothing all day i mean especially in egypt it's like a free vacation i i, I, I know a bunch of people who work like I, I don't personally know them but i know like the people that work there like i know them but they don't know me if you know what i'm saying so that work in like the Paris embassy like Lithuanian Paris embassy they do nothing all day like I know who goes to these jobs you know what I'm saying it's pretty much like coffee time all day so uh I don't know probably the Polish embassy was pretty lazy that's what I'm leaning towards they were like another drunk Polish person just just I ah, just I, I, I don't have time for this like the coffee is getting cold you know that's my end of the theory and you want to say something <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even and even I think just agreeing with you that like even if let's say they did do that, and this is just part of her parents, given the big pushback on everything, well, that's still not actually helping that helping that much, right? It's just saying, oh, come here to this other country where you have really not that not not much authority. Like, I don't even know what Egyptian laws are about how much power you have over a family member. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not it's not like taking definitive action. Like, hey, a citizen from our country is making an ass of themselves and maybe is having a mental health crisis. Let's actually empower the Egyptian authorities and then get her on a friggin' you know special plane or a boat or something back home. No, they're like, oh, let's call our parents and, and let them deal with it. It's still passing the buck. I mean, definitely, but you know the jumping back to the official theory is that um she actually was uh now not going back home by that ticket that marcus bought her on the 29th however there was a plan for her to return back to poland and the plan was that a man that both i think his name was like matt chase something like that i probably butchered his name my apologies as always was going to pick her up the next day on the 30th 
So the the plan was because he had bought tickets prior to her not being able to board the flight, just as a precaution, you know, because everyone back home in Poland were really uh, like worried about her. So they had the plan B. So this guy was the plan B. He was about to come the next day and pick her up. So Mahmoud was thinking, I need to bring Magdalena uh, to a hotel, put her to bed as, like for a night until this uh, Maciej guy comes and picks her up or at least that's gonna be his problem then you know what I'm saying because Mahmoud still has a job to do I mean we don't know what his job is maybe he is like an avid raper of people uh, during the middle of the night in like small boats in the Red Sea I mean we don't know uh, maybe he's a human trafficker uh, I'm not disregarding that completely but uh, at this point it seems that he was just a casual casual tour guide at least to me personally um don't don't get offended if uh, if it doesn't correlate with your theories we'd love to hear them in the comments but besides that Mahmoud then takes her back to the same hotel that she originally arrived and now this hotel is saying nope uh nope so uh he then takes her to another hotel uh, they pretty much say nope as well and then he finally finds a hotel where she could stay and I'm not sure when exactly this phone call was taken but now we can jump to the phone call to the infamous phone call that Marcus had recorded uh, I'm not gonna play the the audio because it's in Polish uh, so and there are subtitles so uh, you can find it online it's pretty easy uh, she's acting crazy uh, she's weaving she's not really answering Marcus's questions uh, she's like uh, Marcus keeps asking her tell me what happened tell me what happened but she doesn't answer at all she's like uh, weaving and dodging and things like that uh, sh then on some occasions Marcus says do you trust me and then she says yes and then Marcus says then tell me and then she doesn't say anything so what I get from this is that she is understanding what Marcus is saying because she's not willing to answer to a question what happened but she is willing to answer to a question do you trust me so in my head she understands what's happening to some degree in this phone call I mean there's no way around it because she was answering some questions she does say that um, it's not gonna work I'm not gonna come back she also says they have plans here they do bad things to me etc etc some people state that they heard her say that they that she got raped she says that I got raped uh, but it's questionable if if that's what she actually said said I mean I don't know Polish so I can't speak too much on it as well as Mahmoud and his guys make some offensive comments towards uh, Marcus regarding his like private parts things like that I mean you could look look it up I mean it looked to me like banter like just casual banter uh, but I don't know uh, and then uh, let's jump to the big question is why is Magdalena using Mahmoud phone for this phone call and why is she's not holding the phone why is someone else holding the phone and like keeping like showing her the phone you know what I'm saying like what what are your thoughts why is she not using her own phone why is she's uh, you know why is she using Mahmoud phone and why is someone else holding the phone for her I mean you know, I'm wondering with the the thing, so I, I read that, that people were saying that the translation of what they were saying in the background in Arabic about Marcus, Marcus yeah, was, was were things that were insulting to him. I wonder how verified that is, if that's just one person saying that or if that's like accepted. It would be interesting to, to hear, I guess, in the comments about like especially if you speak Arabic or, or the Egyptian version of Arabic if you can verify that for us because that would be a lot of help because yeah it's pretty creepy if that's going on I mean look I, I don't want to discount because we could probably get some criticism people saying look someone who's having a mental breakdown 
is almost like the perfect victim for, let's say, Marcus or his friends or anybody wanted to victimize her and sexually abuse her. Um, that's true, right? I mean, that that's, that's, that happens for sure. People who are at risk often are the ones that are victimized because they can't really, like, people don't believe them. Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm on the fence about that. I'm not saying that didn't also happen. I don't know that that's the main driver of whatever's going on in here. Like, I still feel there's there's something else that's making all of this this happen. Um, and, you know, if there is something like that going on, it's just one of many bad things going on for her. Not, not you know, not, not accepting, of course, what you just said, that she's basically on a, on a blacklist now for a bunch of hotels in the area because, like, word got around, right? That there's this crazy Polish tourist. Like, it sounds like it made the, 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 the grapevine of, of the gossip grapevine there. And they're like, oh, my gosh, you don't, you don't even want to want to hear about this tourist we've got who has done <laughs> every bad thing. Like, like, you know, there's 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 like a long list of bad things a tourist could do and or, or, or be a, the way they could be a disaster. Like, don't you feel like in some way she's become like almost the most expensive tourist? And that's not even counting, you know, what happens after the, to them after something happens to her. Mm. She's already you know, like, like causing a lot of problems. So from that perspective, I also wonder, I wonder if someone from this area of the world might, might say, Hey, the reason why they were saying that about the boyfriend was he wasn't there with her helping her. And he seemed kind of wussy on the phone and this like, Oh, do you love me? And do you trust me? And like, well, why aren't you here, dude? And then like, why are we having to like, they might be pissed off at this point. Like, look, like maybe what's his name? Mahmood. Maybe he was supposed to already like be off work, and now that like they're not having their their night out or their Friday night because they're having to baby, basically babysit this mental patient, you mm. know, day after day after day, and now they're and they just had it I right. Mean, can I got, like twenty four hours left? Can I step yeah. in because there are some details that uh, I'm not sure if you you would mention. So uh, first of all, uh, when I asked you why was she not using her own phone and. I don't know why she was not using her own phone, but I know, I think I know why they were holding the phone for her. She looks like she's moving around quite rapidly. I think you wouldn't want to give your own phone to a person like that, if you know what I'm saying regarding the safety of that phone, that it would not get dropped on the floor and things like that. So I yeah. think that's, that would be the explanation. Now, now, now uh, the detail that you would not have mentioned to me, it's a big it's a big one. It's like, this is a crazy detail. Uh, Mahmoud and Marcus knew each other on Facebook before all of this. Your thoughts? That's just bizarre. I mean, how do they... Do you mean, do, would it Facebook be, friends, I, bro. What's, what's the context? Yeah. Facebook friends. I have no idea what's about the context. The, uh, I don't know, yeah. man. Like, Facebook friends. But... After the whole ordeal, uh, Mahmoud unfriended, I believe, Marcus. So, I mean, this is the information that I've gathered. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not 100% clear. I mean, I, I wasn't Mahmoud's friend on Facebook, and I haven't gone through the list of friends. But some people say that they were friends on Facebook. So, I don't know, man. I mean, this would make this would like uh, this is like a 360. I mean, a 180. You know what I'm saying? This is like a 180 in the case, if that's uh, but I mean, is that, you know what I mean though? This is, I guess, an another one of those things, just like the phone in the ocean and like the, you know, like, like the, the, whether or not the parents paid for the trip, like, do we know for sure that they were Facebook friends Man, or is that some people that you know investigated I mean? over the internet, they said that they don't know for sure about the cell phone uh, being in the middle of the Red Sea but they said that they know for sure about this and this is the huh. like people that are leaning towards the more sinister theories these people said that they are not sure about like the trip to the Red Sea which was which is the main point I feel like you know in the story but they say that they are certain that he was on Facebook uh, a friend with Mahmoud I'm sure that he was a friend with Mahmoud during 
all of the the shenanigans that you know was 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 happening because he was probably yo i need to be a friend with this guy to keep him to to, to, to get information about my girlfriend but um if he was like before that i'm i don't know man it's just or well, let's let's leave this for the ending okay man because let's let's move to what actually happened after this phone call now uh marcus actually uh, gets told by Mahmoud at some point. Uh, Mahmoud takes over this phone call and says, uh, "We will drop her off to the hotel, man, uh, and whatever, whatever." I think he was informed at that point that tomorrow uh, Marcus's friend is coming to pick Magdalena up. But Magdalena passes out in Mahmoud's car, so Mahmoud is forced to take her to the hospital. And she arrives at the hospital, and we have some footage from that whole scene, and it's a pretty. I mean the footage is pretty disturbing so if you are not watching this on youtube i mean to get a full grasp of what's happening you would have to go to our youtube channel and really look into what we're showing here so um yeah wait what is this footage let me just check oh no uh, uh my bad i got the wrong footage for you guys so pretty much this is uh the compilation of pretty much magdalena arriving at this place so she arrives apparently at like i believe it was like 9 p.m 7 p.m my bad 7 p.m she arrives in a wheelchair and she's not acting too crazy at first but then or maybe she is i'm looking at at the time something now nah, she arrives pretty normally but now we can see her running around this is her uh, pretty much in the middle of the night. So what do you make of these footages, man? This is pretty graphic. This is this is pretty crazy right here Yeah, I mean without context, I mean it would look like an assault Like a, someone watching this and they didn't hear the whole rest of our show today They would look at this say oh, this was someone that's being Carted off, but then you see a woman right there behind the guys and then when you when you know that it's a hospital and she's done all these other erratic things this whole trip. Um, and then that guy looks like a nurse or orderly or something. Yeah, this is where... By the way, so you, you mentioned, once again, the problem, well, the reason why the hospital didn't want to take mental patients, because what we're watching right now is we're watching a doctor or a, or, a, or a nurse or orderly explain how they had to use towels and blankets to tie Magdalena to the bed to restrain her. They had to restrain her because she was fighting people and trying to run out um and and you know we'll, we'll get into what happened after this but you know to your point yeah maybe one reason why why there's there's something called a mental hospital is because mental hospitals have to do something that normal hospitals don't which is restrain patients right because they, they have to basically treat some of their patients like they were prisoners in a jail right and it, when you don't have the special restraints for that because like they, they had to use towels because they wouldn't leave a mark. So they would, you know, if, if you restrain somebody with the wrong thing, you can cut off circulation. That's why mental hospitals and jails and prisons actually have special equipment for that. They don't have that equipment. They're used to, you know, dealing with people that with, that have diabetes or cut their hand or broke their leg or, you know, need surgery, not someone who needs to be tied to a bed to keep from, killing yourself exactly i mean that's a good point that you just made you know maybe that's why they initially were like we can't handle her you know on the 28th but then on the 29th they were like we have to take her in you know she's way too crazy she's you know she's i mean from these footages it seems like she's attacking people i mean sorry guys but like she really does seem like she was just attacking someone you know i mean maybe she's attacking them because they raped her which to me just seems like they're attacking her. Now, another thing was that uh, in this footage that we are looking at, a whole bunch of people are not wearing uh, doctor clothes and people are saying that these people are not doctors. So uh, your end of the line. Well, well I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, it's, I think it's hard to tell because of the color of the, the video. I mean, at least one of those people, the person closest to the camera looks like some kind of orderly. Some of the others might actually be like, office workers you know like not everybody if you if you if you sit behind a desk at the nurse's station and and like do the paperwork well you don't need to be wearing scrubs right you're not going to ever change anybody's catheter and then in, in, in that same video like once again it says it's like depends how long of the video you watch 
what it looks like because what looks like a sexual assault for the first five seconds when a lady shows up you can tell it's a woman because she's got a hair covering and she looks like a woman like that's not a sexual assault probably i don't think so not in egypt i don't think that, that that's you know like like things are not like that there where some some woman who, who works at the hospital isn't going to stand there while men physically abuse any woman let alone some westerner for whom they're all they're all going to get a lot of attention afterwards about um yeah and then and then we're watching other footage where she's like restrained to the wheelchair and yeah i mean it just and then it's interesting like people pointed out in that the, the research you sent me someone like uh, i know actually it was uh, one of the other videos i was watching from a couple of years ago when this first happened they're like oh well he seems like she's particularly attacking one guy and what's that about and I'm like, well, maybe that's, once again, maybe that's one of the dudes that's just really annoyed that, that he has to, to, to hang out with Mahmoud. Yeah, we were supposed to be, you know, out doing stuff tonight. And, uh, you know, because of you, Magdalena, because of you, who, like, look, you couldn't even keep it together for another 12 hours so we could get you to see your friend. Now you got to pass out. Now, now we're at the hospital again. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I guess maybe I'm projecting into this, but if you ever had to deal with a really pain in the ass person and like or i don't know or maybe maybe especially or 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 someone you're in a relationship with or don't get along with maybe i'm just you know what i mean like to me this almost like if you didn't have understanding about her mental issues and maybe if you didn't believe in mental issues or you didn't really understand why she was doing what she was doing this could be like and, and especially if you didn't actually work for the hotel so like you're not even doing this because you're getting paid you're doing this because mahmoud's your dude like he's your bud so you're like, all right, dude, I'm just going to help you. Like you, you bit off way more than you can chew or they, they, they have you doing a job. It's not even really your job, but and I get it. You're just trying to make nice for your boss. And this lady, man, she can't even, she, they can't even get her to a hotel. They can't even get her. She can't even go like an hour without some other freaking escalation into this meltdown she's having. I don't know. Like, I'm just, I'm just, like I said, I may get a lot of comments and backlash about this, but from my perspective, maybe maybe she and someone else got into it real personal. Where one of the friends was like, "You know what? F you! Like, just stop it! Like, just you know, like like." I, sometimes people get people get get angry at insane people, people that are having mental issues because they get so frustrated with them. And this is why this is a big problem for people that are that are mentally handicapped or have mental disabilities. Is sometimes the people around them that should be taking care of them get abusive because they just they don't have the empathy for them or they're just fed up, right? They just, they just reach, they, their patience has a limit. And maybe that's part of what's going on. Maybe she and someone else here, this one guy that you see in the plaid shirt that she's just lashing out at, maybe she's just like, dude, I'm tired of your mouth. Like, I'm, I'm, you know. I mean, the thing <laughs> is, the thing I'm is. I'm having a problem here. Yeah, I mean, you made gr uh, great points here, but I just want to add that no one really knows if Mahmoud and his boys were still at the hospital. I feel like they probably went out and did, you know, other things, and and then the okay. hos hospital was. Yeah, I think because Mah Mah Mahmoud is like, like an employee or something. Yeah, so, yeah, maybe that's even maybe that's maybe she's like, who are you to tell me that I can't go jump off the top of the or, building? Or or, um, or 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 maybe these are just some other patients. Yeah. Could be that too, right? Other just other passerby or family members of pa patients that were like, "Who's this lady running around fighting the hospital staff, uh, not listening?" Exactly. Now uh, she is restrained with towels. She's given that drug. I mean, just keeping it real short. Could you like pretty much tell everyone about the drug and me as well? Because I think you know a little bit more about it. But let's keep it quite short, man. Yeah, I'll just keep it real. The, the the short version is she was given something called midazolam. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. It's also known, known as, under the tra trade name Versed. It's a benzodiazepine, so which is <laughs> benzos. benzos. Benzos are really famous. Yeah, benzos are that's that's a short version of what they used to in the 70s, 60s and 70s. Benzos were things that would get you get you feeling real drunk and calm down, but. Uh, you know, highly illegal outside of prescription. It's used as anesthesia, used to treat, um, used as procedural sedation, so to sedate a person who's being erratic. It's also sometimes used for people having seizures, but it's only for an emergency. You don't do long term. Uh, people are having trouble sleeping, which we don't really know if she did any real sleeping, and severe agitation. And she certainly looks 
severely agitated. Interestingly, um, it can have what's called a paradoxical effect. So a paradoxical effect is like um, <laughs> you give your kids something to sleep um, or, or you give them something, you give them a medicine like an antihistamine that should make them sleep and instead they're bouncing off the walls. That's called a paradoxical effect. Um, so that, that can happen. Um, so that, that might be why even after they tried to calm her down. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a standard drug to be given at this situation. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Okay. So they then tie her up with, uh, towels because as you've mentioned earlier, this facility does not have the, uh, cor their, the equipment to deal with situations like this so they use towels and from my end of the research towels are pretty commonly used in situations like this because uh, they don't leave like stretch like marks they don't like uh, damage the skin because the person is constantly like gonna be try trying to get out of those towel restraints so you need something soft enough uh, you know what i'm saying so at Somewhere around now, this is the official story, and people are questioning it, questioning the credibility of the story. At at two fifty a.m. or like two forty a.m. on the thirtieth, on the same day that this Matsei guy was gonna go pick her up from the hospital, allegedly, uh, pretty much she asks one of the nurse, "I need to go to the bathroom." Uh, and the nurse pretty much decides to untie her now this is a situation where I'm definitely leaning towards that uh, this was not handled correctly I mean you could pretty much see that you need like six or seven people to handle this person but now a nurse will willingly untie her a few hours be uh, later to go to the bathroom and you know uh, obviously as we can all sort of start to think uh, what happened next she does not go to the bathroom she jumps out the window so uh, at 250 she jumps out of a second story window and second story uh, on paper sounds not as bad as it is in real life I believe because if from this particular clip that we have been looking at for the last 20 or so minutes uh, if it's like if it's from the window that the director of this uh, establishment showed she jumped out of then it would feel more like like this place like look at this this to me would feel like more like a fifth or maybe even like a sixth store you know window it doesn't feel like a second store window because you jump out of the second store window what you will have like a broken leg or something like that but you jump out of here on like a pointy ledge you know what I'm saying you're gone at that point I'm thinking you're gone so she does jump and she, one side of her body is damaged uh, her lung is pierced her skull is fractured I believe like she has a whole bunch of issues at that point and some people are stating that I mean uh, but these are viable statements that when you jump uh, when you want to commit a suicide you usually that have different injuries like your abdominal uh, part of the body is pretty much smashed and you most of the time you land on your feet uh, because uh, the self-preservation instincts of humans even if you're committing a suicide those self-preservation instinct instincts they will sort of come into play regardless uh, if you want to kill yourself or not it's just uh, human nature to do that uh, but I think that's I mean, I could be completely wrong here, but I'm thinking that those types of injuries occur when a person slowly walks up to the ledge, like says his final prayers or whatever, and then just closes his eyes and then jumps. But this situation, if you're going by the official theory, she just ran and jumped out of the window, like viciously jumped out of the window. I think it is, these there are two different ways you could jump out of a window either in a peaceful way where you're like say your last goodbyes and you jump in a peaceful way and then you will have a certain set of injuries or you jump out in a very violent way and then i think it would correlate uh with her injuries that like a side of her body was just like violently destroyed at that point so uh your thoughts yeah yeah i mean two things so one is i've definitely seen videos of people that are i mean sadly sad to say there's a lot of videos like this out there 
I've definitely seen videos of people that were totally committed. So like you said, they weren't all, you know, hesitant and walking up and, oh, I'm going to, you know, it was like, no, I'm going to do it. And they were single minded. And maybe especially if you're not in your right mind, so you don't even necessarily think it's real. I've seen videos where those people landed on their sides, landed flat as a pancake and just landed so hard they bounced off the ground. Um, God damn. Did they did not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like they bounced like a ball. I don't mean to laugh, but it's it's like it's so so horrible. It's almost it's it's almost absurdly comical. I'll also say that one of the interesting there's a there's a quote I have about Silent Live where Norm Macdonald was saying that uh, back when he used to work with Chris Farley, if anybody if people know who that is, Chris Farley is a famous Silent Live comic who died uh, of a drug overdose so they were saying well one of his specialties was in his movies and on Saturday Live he could do stunt falls so he would fall like he could fall like a table and break it like a, like a stunt table like a breakaway table or fall through a wall and they were saying interestingly so this is kind of goes against what I was saying but all, all the rest of them tried to fall on their face on this table and not like you said put their hands in front of them except Chris Farley Chris Farley could do it every time just without he had, he didn't have so some people just don't have that instinct or are able to suppress it where he could fall right in his face and you know somehow was just oblivious to like I mean you know like I said I, I, I can't fall like that neither um, can I yeah but that's yeah. that's that's an excellent point man that um yeah yeah maybe but maybe when who knows uh, how it would be if I was having some mental issues you know uh, i i probably throw that uh out the window that instinct no pun intended yeah i mean the, the other thing was like I, I think in that that same resource one of the sources you and i were looking at the person saying it was like a was like a, a, a some kind of private investigator and like i don't know what a private investigator has to do to be a private investigator in poland but in the United States, it could be almost anybody. Like they've they've done a course, maybe gotten some kind of licensing. That doesn't make them a, a forensic pathologist. You know what I mean? That's just someone talking s. You know, talking a little bit of yeah, bro science, right? So like like you know, the guys talking a little bro science. Oh, they never. You know, it's like ah, oh, you know, you don't you don't know. Do you actually have like a? <laughs> I would maybe it'd be really interesting as a follow up show someday for us to look at statistics or a table of people of injuries to people that committed suicide by jumping off jumping through a window or jumping off a building what those injuries actually were like percentage wise that might be a little bit fascinating dig for some people maybe it's too grim for our audience but yeah anyway exactly. I, I guess I, I i i mean she seems like she was pretty pretty determined to do something there but i guess to your point though it is a little suspicious like i don't know did this guy just was he not there earlier in the day maybe he got on maybe this 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 next nurse or orderly got on the job and nobody told him not to untie the the tied up girl like that's kind of weird i mean if you see someone tied up with towels in a place where there shouldn't be mental patients uh, i think you should be like second guessing if you're untying people i mean i've been to a hospital in lithuania and that that scene just was like just like raw like real raw so like a bunch of like elderly people tied up to like hospital beds because they're going crazy i mean geo that's that's like that's a raw that's like a raw scene that's that that changes like that changes people when you see that (laughs) that's crazy yeah so i should do a show on that Man, that's, that's, that's like the, one of the worst things I ever heard. Man, I have seen some things, man. Especially here in Eastern Europe, you you see some things, man. So, uh, so yeah, so definitely. Um, now let's get back to the story. Fifteen hours after she jumps out of there, she uh, dies because of her uh, injuries. She is put in a forcefully induced coma like a standard medical procedure but you know uh, she dies there's a bunch of like little details like the like the tour agency called her parents and said now there she's in the hospital she fell out of a window but she's gonna be okay she's good she's good but then you know she dies so that's pretty much the story here and i think at this point since we're uh gonna be closing the show off i think 
we finally like finished the race uh, and you know uh, going through the story I think this is the time where we now give our uh, ideas of what actually happened and if you don't mind I think I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna say that I do not know definitively what happened uh, I don't think anyone does but uh, last episode we did about Chris Kremers and Lisanne Froon uh, and on that case uh, I really was um, I, it was 50-50 to me like that last one was definitely 50-50 to me but this one I'm I'm gonna lean towards the more rational explanation that she had some sort of a mental psychotic breakdown she was probably that the change of scenery as well as alcohol well she wasn't drinking on her later days obviously but the alcohol or at least on the first day sort of kick-started everything uh, she hasn't ate in at some point at like three days I mean we don't even have information if she was eating anything like up to her death like did anyone ever feed her I don't know that so um, I'm thinking she's having a mental breakdown she allegedly did try to jump off the building at 6 a.m. on the 19th, on the 29th, and then she does this, pretty much the same thing like 20 hours later uh, on the 30th. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is a mental breakdown. And then she pretty much just jumps and she dies like that. Uh, Mahmoud and his boys. Uh, they're suspicious, but I'm leaning towards that they were only bantering and they were getting a little bit pissed off that uh, they have to sacrifice maybe their own free time for this woman. So that's what I'm thinking, but it's still up to debate in my head. So if anyone disagrees, please let us know without like pressing the dislikes <laughs> if you can. Yeah, your 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 thing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty. I think I'm, I'm pretty much in line with you. I mean, I'll, I'll even go farther because I, you know, we, we looked at sort of like the Polish government is still up in the air about this. Apparently, they've they've promised to release some updated results, and even as recently as June of this year, you know, this thing happened like three years ago. June of this year, they've kind of postponed it again. <clears throat> I kind of have the feeling that they're getting internal pressure, maybe from people that don't want to hear don't want to hear the bad news or don't want to, they don't want to hear something they don't want to hear. So I don't know that her, her family or her parents are understandably going to be very impartial about this. I think that it sounds like on one end she was very high energy and maybe kind of manic. And I don't know if there was any kind of history of bipolar disorder or something like that. I mean, certainly it was admirable what she was able to achieve in her short life. Um, a lot of her actions and then kind of the excuses I see from the family and people that know her that, oh, she would never do this. She would never do that. But yet she was doing it. And it sounds like she was doing a lot of kind of weird things even before this trip. So from my perspective, you know, I, I understand that there's other suspicious parts. I'm not ruling out entirely that something else could have happened to her. I also thought it was interesting when you mentioned the free alcohol. I'm like, gosh, you know, it's a developing nation, Egypt. How do you afford a bunch of Eastern Europeans or anybody drinking, you know, all they can drink there? And one thing I will mention is there was a whole scandal here where in Mexico there was kind of a similar setup and um, a, a bunch of Americans like died suddenly on different different resorts. And they think they were using basically like counterfeit liquor. So liquor that wasn't like on the up and up, if that makes sense. Right. Like liquor that maybe was not entirely held. <laughs> Not that liquor is healthy for you, but if you make the wrong, if you make it the wrong way, liquor can be absolutely poisonous or deadly. So something does make me wonder, like, is there any of that going on? Where, where what they're getting is more like moonshine or, or counterfeit liquor. Maybe that also could have affected someone badly. But yeah, I just think she's she's just acting erratic the whole time. There's this persistent behavior that doesn't sound. You know, sometimes when things like this happen. It's like all of the behaviors constrained to like a day or half a day or six hours or two hours. And then you're like, oh, yeah, maybe that could person could have been drugged. Someone would have had to be been drugging her from since she got off the plane. So it doesn't make sense. She was acting really weird. There's a there's a couple syndromes out there 
um, like Paris syndrome, Stendhal syndrome, um, Jerusalem syndrome, syndromes where people go far away from where they live into a different culture. And sometimes it's a mixture, I think, of sounds like it's a mixture of culture shock, which I, I will say even I had, you know, the one the first time I went to Belize. Doesn't make sense, but it felt kind of weird for like the first half a day. It took me a little, it was really strange. It was the first time I'd been anywhere besides like Canada. And I don't know, it's not, it's not even that much different in Belize in a lot of ways, but it was kind of weird. It kind of threw my head for a loop. I think maybe it's not that unusual, but yeah. Anyways, couple that with someone who might already have something like schizophrenia and just have it not be diagnosed because everyone just thought she was quirky and eccentric and high energy. Well, Sometimes people are in denial about what that really is, and, and you know, it, it it could have been that she had a major psycho psychiatric malady emerge under the stress of being away from her loved ones, away from her boyfriend, in a foreign country. You land, you're like a little bit jet lagged, maybe, um, and I don't know what she expected from Egypt. So that's another thing. That's another part of the what's called the Paris syndrome. It's just your expectations don't meet your reality. And it, it, it has a lot of these same side effects like hallucinations and disorientation and kind of weird disruptions in our energy. And um, once again, when I did the research on this before the show, a big percentage of the time, and it doesn't happen that often, it's only at like, you know, 50, 60 cases every year in these different places. It's almost always schizophrenia that's emerging under stress. So, yeah, that's my. My, my theory, but I, I, I'm sure we're going to hear a lot from the feedback, so I, feedback from the, the fans. Um, for a, anybody ripping me a new one, um, I'm, I'm half Polish, so it's not out of any prejudice for Poland. I'm, I'm fully supporting all, all the new Polish people out there. But yeah, I just, I, it, you know, I, I imagine if you were Egyptian and this happened in your country and someone, you know, is having a mental crisis and all of a sudden, everyone's accusing your countrymen. And it's not like things don't happen there for sure. But like, make sure when you make accusations that it's the right, under the right circumstances. Like, I, I could see if I were Egyptian, maybe I would be pretty insulted that everyone's right away like conjuring up like conspiracy theories about human trafficking and date rapes and group rapes and all these other things. When I don't know, the facts kind of look like a tourist came and acted pretty badly, maybe under like some kind of mental breakdown and then killed herself. And then all of a sudden everyone's branding your society rapist. Like that's not, that's not cool. Too cool. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. Anyway, <laughs> that's a, that's a good breakdown, man. Um, so yeah, guys, we will be signing off right now. Um, so as Glenn mentioned earlier, if you have your own theories, please let us know in the comment section and maybe even like provide us with like some links potentially or, or things like that, where we could like really look into it. And if we missed stuff, we would definitely come back eventually and redo the case if if it will turn out that we completely botched this uh, then we will come back uh, so yeah guys uh, thank you for listening to this podcast and as always catch us on the next week's show and for now stay safe and peace out